All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are set now. 12 laps at Daytona Speedway, a little over a mile long. The course, the track very, very rough. The sand has been dug up. A lot of holes developing now, Steve Wise. Well, the, the longer go, the rough it gets. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The sign goes down. The gate drops into the first turn. It is number 14 in front. Go Brecker has got the hole shot. out in front with number four, Johnny O'Mara running second. 18 is on the ground, Mike Bell, Cable with number 17, Alan King. They're back up again, dead last in the race. And out in front is Hannah, and the crowd is going crazy. Bob Hurricane Hannah, Johnny O'Mara through the whoop de doos Now stretching out, Hannah on the gas in fifth gear into the sharp right-hand turn. The rest of the pack, 40 of the best of the world, strung out behind him. And in third spot is David Bailey, but here comes Hannah. Paul had a good start. He's going to get out there and just ride as hard as he can, and he sure looks good in his position right now. In second spot, Johnny O'Mara, and there is David Bailey, number 11 in third. And Bailey wants O'Mara. He's second in the standings, and he wants a shot at Hannah. Hannah launching himself over the double jump. Barnett's running fourth, and he's moving up, and he wants to win this race. It is a Honda Brake train, one, two, three, and Barnett wants to get in and derail him real fast. And Barnett is dangerous. He's running fourth, but he is gaining on Bailey. Hitting speeds of close to 70 miles an hour on this Daytona track. In fifth gear, wide open. And you get off at a speed like that, you end up in the cheap seats. Hannah in front, number 12. Second spot, O'Mara, number four, has never yet won a Supercross. And David Bailey is third. They're, they're not only hitting the, the speeds of 70 miles an hour, but it's really rough out there, too. They're going over pumps at about 70 miles an hour. Bob Hurricane Hannah with a double jump. Running behind him, O'Mara, then Bailey, and in fourth spot, the Mark, the Bomber Barnett. One thing they can't afford to let Bob do is to stretch a big lead out early in the race because he's got so much stamina, he won't get tired. So they've got to keep with him early in this race. There was talk earlier, in fact, there's a story in the paper this morning that uh, some of the other riders were getting tired of Hannah's mouth and they were going to try to take him out. And somebody asked Hannah about that. He says, they got to catch me to do it. And there goes Hannah. Whoa, look at it fly. Bob Hurricane Hannah in front, and about 50,000 people are cheering and standing and yelling for Hannah. O'Mara second, Bailey third, and the first yellow-clad rider is fourth. That is Mark Barnett, formerly of Bridgeville, Illinois, now living in Alabama, but there goes Hannah. One of the disadvantages, Steve Wise, of being out in front, and you've been there many a time on a Supercross track, you have nothing to relate to. You don't know how hard you go into the turn. The guy running second can watch the rider in front and see where he's breaking, right? That's very true, and also you've got a lot of pressure, and people are following you and watching what your lines, are, what lines you're taking, so you've got to be precise in your lines and precise in your movements. Across the asphalt, Hannah goes. It's on the sand and into the asphalt and goes a little sideways. But there is Bob Hurricane Hannah out in front. Severely injured in 1980 in a water ski accident. Came back in 81, did not win a race for an awfully long time. He switched brands, he's on a different factory bike, and Lord, is he going fast. He looks awful smooth out there, Larry. It's been said, and Hannah has said it himself. He says, I try to save it until the absolute final second. And when I crash, I normally crash awfully hard. Well, when he does get off there, big time crashes. I've seen him get off a few times. Bob Hanna on the red Honda in front. In second spot, Johnny O'Mara, number four. In third spot, number 11, David Bailey. And then Mark the Bomber Barnett still trying to get past Bailey and get a shot at O'Mara. There is no love lost between Barnett and Hanna. And Hanna would love to move up on the number 12 rider. Bob Hanna and take him out. A lot of physical contact with Supercross Steve Wise. There is a lot of contact because the tracks are so tight and narrow. And to pass a rider, you just got to come in there and ram them a lot of times. The top riders such as Hannah Barnett making well over $200,000, $250,000 a year, equal to NBA stars or baseball superstars. They are raking a lot of money, but unlike the other athletes, and they are athletes, make no mistake about it, they are just about at the end of their career at age 25 or 26. There are no riders that are competitive into their 30s, and Hannah is 26, and as he said, going on 40, but he sure does ride like it.
No, he sure did. And Bob trains very hard for this event. Motocross is the second most physical demanding sport in the world, uh, second to soccer only. And I'll tell you, Bob does a lot of miles, and all these riders do. Look at Hannah going over the double jumps. He's shifting his weight in midair as he lands on the second jump with the precision of a brain surgeon. When you're incredibly talented. When you're in top shape for motocross, running is nothing. Bob Hurricane Hannah spewing up rooster tails, great rooster tails of sand, 30 to 40 feet in the air. And right in the face of number four, Johnny O'Mara, his teammate. O'Mara, the white flan rider, the white jersey, in second spot of the white helmet, number four. Well, Johnny's very a calculated rider, and he, he doesn't take very many chances. He's overdue for a win, and so he's really looking for that win here at Daytona. O'Mara in second spot, trying to hold on a second. A lot of points per second, and O'Mara's looking to move up in the point standings. Hannah up in the air, styling as they call it, crossed up, got a beautiful hole shot, and is smoking the rest of the field here in Daytona. A beautiful day. The temperature of the upper 60s, you couldn't ask for a more perfect day. Larry Huffman and Steve Wise on the microphone here for the action of this Wrangler Super Series. The top five as we go into lap number four. It is number 12, Hanny in front. Then, Johnny O'Mara, number four in second. David Bailey, the little professor, number 11 in third. Number two, Barnett in fourth. And rounding up the first five, number 14, Go Brecker on the production, CR250 Honda. Four works bikes, one production bike in the first five. There's Mike Bell clearing those double jumps there. He crashed in the start. He's trying to work his way through the pack. Mike Bell is running 28, and a lot of riders would give it up, but Bell is hammering at him and trying to move up through the pack. There he goes by, number 216. Keith Olerich of Florida, another Florida rider. Bell is on the move, but he's got a long way to go and not that much time to do it. There's Bailey, your third place rider, all alone in third spot, trying to get a shot at Johnny O'Mara in second. And Barnett is running in fourth right behind Bailey, and you can bet, Steve Wise, that he knows exactly where Barnett is. Well, he sure does, and also Bailey's in second place in the Wrangler point standing, so he has to uh, make as many points as he can here at Daytona, so he's looking for that second or first place position. Steve Wise, you won the New Orleans Supercross back in 1980. What does it feel like to be in Hannah's shoes right now, being out in front? Well, Bob's trying to ride a smooth race, like I said, and and he does have pressure because he's got to set the pace. He can't watch anybody. He's trying to set his own pace. A lot of times you can overdo it when you're all by yourself. You wonder if these young men are athletes. They call them the Iron Men of Supercross and Motocross. Hannah regularly runs 10 kilometer races, 10 day races in the 30 minute flat range. Tell me he's not in shape. Look at him. What were those hooked to do? His body on the bike taking a terrific pounding, but still staying on top of the bike and jamming it through the corner. Bob Hurricane Han in front, there's the first non-Honda, that is Mark Barnett, number two in fourth spot, and Glover is now moving up, Glover has gone past Brecker in fifth, Steve Wise, this could be a factor, Brock Glover the golden boy into fifth. Well, Brock was really uh, disappointed last weekend, he's looking forward to this weekend, so he was really putting everything into it, and uh, he really wanted to win here at Daytona. Brock Glover of San Diego, California, number six, is moving into fifth spot, and is pressuring Barnett for four, there's Barnett number two, there's Glover number six, and right behind him, Brecker number 14, and then number eight, Rick Johnson. Johnson running, running in seventh spot. There's no love lost between Barnett and Glover either. They're Before really after each other. There is no question about that. They will get physical and definitely will take each other out if they have to. There are the double jumps. We were in Japan in November of the Tokyo Super Bowl, and the Japanese riders could not believe the Americans being able to, to put the bikes in perfect, perfect position to jump, jump the double jumps and stay upright. That just comes from hours and hours of training and practicing on the bike to get the bike right. I asked Bailey about that one time, and he said, you just lift the bike up. I don't know how you could do it, but you just lift the bike up. Fifth gear of that long, sweeping right-hand turn, hitting 65 to 70 miles an hour. And there is Mark Barnett, a picture of determination, as he tries desperately to move up on number 11, David Bailey. Remember, Mark Barnett just came off a win in Atlanta. He's third place in the standings and wants to pick up those points. Meanwhile, Hannah hammering away at the track and hammering away at himself. Look at the suspension, the beating that he takes. The arm strength has got to be tremendous. Hannah 
is wiry, weighs about 135, 140 pounds, 26 years old, in incredible physical shape. Well, your forearms pump up so much in this race because of all the bumps. Your forearms just get like rock hard, so they really have to be uh, watch out for that too. And there is a series of hoop to do. The riders have got to go over it. It's a it's a giant washboard. It pushes the suspension up and down and hammers away at the rider. Hannah, for years, rode on the Yamaha team, and there were when he left, there were not very many happy feelings uh, either toward Hannah or from Hannah toward Yamaha. He's run it in the Yamaha that he's going to do very well riding for Honda, and they don't like that at all. Glover and Johnson, his former teammates, and Mike Bell, you can tell in talking to them, they like nothing better than to beat Bob Hannah. There is Johnny O'Mara in second spot, number four, getting sideways a little bit and heading across the asphalt. That asphalt gets really slick as the day goes on because uh, the sand carries out on the asphalt. These guys are running knobby tires that are for dirt. And the minute they hit that asphalt, the bike goes sideways. Bob Hanna with the momentum of his incredible charge in front. He's now starting to get into the lap riders, and that could be a problem. There's David Bailey in third spot, number 11. But Hanna has now got to contend with the slower riders coming by him at a much faster speed. And that also uh, plays a factor because a lot of times a second place rider can catch up with you when you get lap traffic. Bob Hurricane Hanna out in front. And there's no question, if anybody's got confidence, it's Hannah, both in himself and in the bike. This kid is ready to win, especially on this new bike. Horsepower, I mean, if you got about five horsepower more than everybody else, that's enough to do it. Hannah has said in press conferences, he plans on using his former teammates as burbs for traction. They don't like that at all. They do not like that at all. Bob Hanna out in front and setting an incredible pace here at Daytona. And the crowd loves it, Steve Wise. And you can hear it. You can, you can feel the cheers and the excitement of the crowd when you're out in front, right? Well, Bob's much like the Muhammad Ali of motocross. He's just real open about what he thinks and what he believes. And uh, he'll tell you what he thinks about what people are. And, and I'll tell you, you've got to really respect the guy because he says something and he goes out and proves it. We are halfway through the race of this uniquely American sport of Supercross. As Hannah goes so high, he's going to have to reach for an oxygen mask. He's getting the altitude on those jumps. It was born right here at Daytona 11 years ago. The first Supercross ever held, and then it was called Stadium Racing. And Jimmy Weiner won the 250 class right on the same track here. Gary Jones won the Open class. The Super Bowl of Motocross was in Los Angeles in 1972, and it grew to become the fastest growing and the largest sport in motor motorcycle racing, Supercross racing, racing machines over a man-made course. And that's what they're doing here at Daytona, on a very high-speed man-made course, I might add. And there's Johnny O'Mara, number four, who's yet to win a Supercross in second spot. But he sure is learning fast. Watching himself over the jumps, 20 to 30 feet before landing. They're getting 50, 60 miles an hour when they go over the jumps. Steve? Well, one of the differences uh, between outdoor racing and indoor racing, Supercross, you can see the whole track here. And as you see the whole track, it's just a lot more exciting. We'll be back with the exciting conclusion of the Daytona Supercross after this message on the Superstation. The top five, Hannah, Olvera, Bailey, Barnett, and Brock Glover, the first Yamaha running in fifth spot. And there is number 14, Go Brecker, who's running in sixth spot, the first non-factory bike. The young man from Southern California with a weird nickname of Goats. Go for it, Brecker. The white flag out, and Hannah has got one lap to go, less than a mile now, to win this Daytona Supercross, and he is certainly not letting up a bit. Only one more left to go. All he has to do now is be careful through the traffic and over the bumps. Just take it easy. He's got a good lead, and he can win this event. Bob Hanna in front. O'Mara running in second spot as Hanna goes through traffic. The white flag out. One lap to go. Yet, this is a track of upsets and falls, Steve Wise. A number of riders have been leading and fallen in the final lap or two. Yes, sir. They've called this the Bermuda Triangle Race. It's uh, really funny. Some things happen at Daytona that don't, never happen to the other tracks. Bob Hurricane Hanna lapping the slower riders and heading for his third victory of the 1983 season. Daytona Beach, Florida. 
of those bikes is getting hot now, so the, the, the suspension won't be working quite as well as it was at the beginning of the races, so they're going to have to make some adjustments in their riding styles. Conversely, Steve Wise, the, the track gets rougher and puts more of a demand on the suspension, correct? Oh yeah, the sand tracks here they just get really rough. Every lap the bumps are bigger. That just puts more stress on everything. And Hannah is not slowing down a bit. This will be the third time, a two-time winner. A third two-time winner at Daytona. Daryl Schultz and Jimmy the Jammer Winder. Bob Hannah will join that exclusive fraternity. And here he comes. Here comes the checkered flag, and the crowd is cheering. Listen to them. They are happy. And there's the checkered, and Bob Hurricane Hannah takes the Daytona Supercross. And oh, is he happy?